Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Joseph Ward, your historical homeboy, right here on the On the Shoulders of Giants YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in, for checking me out, and being a part of this journey. We're here to give you the sung and unsung heroes of the African diaspora that you probably wouldn't learn about. So thank you for rocking with us. And I just want to let you know that we're now on Patreon. So you can become a patron and help us empower and educate as many communities as possible throughout the African diaspora. www.patreon.com backslash OTSOG. Now go ahead and get to this video so we can drop this knowledge on you. Peace out. Melvin Van Peebles. On August 21st, 1932, Melvin Peebles was born to parents Edwin Griffin and Marion Peebles in Chicago, Illinois. Edwin Griffin worked as a tailor in Phoenix, Illinois, the same suburb where Van Peebles attended Thornton Township High School, graduating in 1949. After high school, he attended West Virginia State College, then transferred to Ohio Wesleyan College graduating with a degree in English literature in 1954. 13 days after his college graduation, Van Peebles joined the Air Force where he served for three and a half years. In 1956, Van Peebles spent time in Mexico. There he married Maria Marx, who was a German actress and photographer. The couple produced Van Peebles' eldest son, actor and director, Mario Van Peebles. While living in Mexico, Van Peebles earned a living as a painter. In 1958, he moved to San Francisco, California, where he found work as a cable car grip man. In 1957, Van Peebles made his first short films, Sunlight and Three Pickup Men for Herrick, as a new filmmaker. With no previous experience in filmmaking and his first two short films in hand, Van Peebles set out to Hollywood to become a film director. Unfortunately, his films were not well received and he did not find anyone who wanted to work with him. While in New York City, he was offered a chance to screen his films in France. This meeting led him and his family to move into the Netherlands and Van Peebles working for the Dutch National Theater. While living in the Netherlands, Melvin Peebles changed his name to Melvin Van Peebles to help him find work. Van Peebles was starting to gain recognition for his films. He was invited to work in Paris by Henri Langlois, a French film activist and influential film figure. Langlois hired Van Peebles to translate Mad Magazine into French. To do so, Van Peebles learned French and began to change the course of his career and film history. Van Peebles began writing plays using a French style of songwriting that mixed singing and speaking. Van Peebles began writing novels in the 1960s. His first four novels were The Big Heart, A Bear for the FBI, The True American, and Harlem Party. He also wrote a collection of short stories in French before releasing a French short film, Cinq Cent Ballets, in 1965. In 1968, Van Peebles made his first feature-length film titled The Story of a Three-Day Pass, which was successful enough to attract Hollywood producers. Because of his name being Van Peebles, the Hollywood producers thought he was a white man. In 1968, Van Peebles released his first studio album as a recording artist titled Brer Soul. The success of the story of the three-day pass led to Van Peebles being selected by Columbia Pictures to direct the film The Watermelon Man in 1970. Van Peebles was also selected to direct the filming of the Power Ridge Rock Festival before it was canceled by a court injunction. In 1971, Melvin Van Peebles rocked Hollywood and the black film industry when he made his groundbreaking film Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song. Van Peebles, along with a $50,000 loan from Bill Cosby, funded the film. Van Peebles wrote the script, directed the film, edited the film, wrote the score for the film, and he also developed and directed the marketing campaign for the film. It is considered a groundbreaking film because it created the black exploitation era in film. Its message resonated with the Black Panthers and other groups fighting for black liberation. It grossed over $10 million and showcased the brilliance of Melvin Van Peebles to the world. In 1972, Van Peebles wrote the composition for his theater adaptation of his novel, Harlem Party, titled Don't Pay Us Cheap. His work on the music and the book led to Van Peebles being nominated for two Tony Awards. 
Van Peebles was also nominated for a Tony Award as a composer and lyricist for the play Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death. In 1976, Van Peebles wrote the theme song for the television series Just an Old Sweet Song in 1977. He wrote the screenplay for the biopic Grease Lightning in 1978. He wrote the pilot for the television show Down Home before making his television debut as an actor in the 1981 series The Sophisticated Gents. Van Peebles began working on the American Stock Exchange as an options trader in the 1980s, where he would ultimately find success. In 1986, he wrote the book Bold Money, A New Way to Play the Options Market. And in 1987, he opened Van Peebles and Hayes Municipal Securities, which was a municipal bonds firm. In 1995, Van Peebles co-starred in the live action version of the Japanese comic Fist of the North Star, in 2005, Van Peebles was the focus of the documentary, How to Eat Your Watermelon in White Company. Later in 2005, Van Peebles along with Ozzie Davis and Gordon Parks were featured in the documentary, Unstoppable. As a professional creator, Melvin Van Peebles wrote 13 books, directed, wrote, scored, or produced over 13 films, earned 10 extra writing credits working on films in various capacities, had 16 credits as an actor, wrote six plays, released seven studio albums, and four movie soundtrack albums. Van Peebles was truly a man that refused to be held back by the racism in America. He earned the chance to make films in Europe, but ended up changing the film industry in America and around the world. He helped Hollywood and the rest of the world see that black people could write, direct, act, produce films, create the music, and even perform the music. He made his first two short films not understanding how to make a movie, but in the end fully understood that he must take control of his career to truly make a difference. Mr. Melvin Van Peebles, we proudly stand on your shoulders. For more information, please visit www.ontheshoulders1.com or www.ontheshoulders.org. And please visit my websites to learn more about the Own the Shoulders of Giants book series and to download the Own the Shoulders of Giants African History Curriculum app.